Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Peace IT's session on risk mitigation strategies. Today I'm going to cover the why of taking risks, and then I'm going to talk about some strategies for mitigating risks. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. Of course, I'm going to begin with the why of taking risks. It seems to be a law of nature, inflexible and inexorable, that those who will not risk cannot win. And that's by John Paul Jones. And it neatly sums up the why of risk taking. In the marketplace, there is no reward without taking on the risk of failure. This brings up an interesting quandary. Investors will often reward risk by increasing the value of a company. On the other hand, failure due to risk-taking often leads to changes in management. This leads to a situation where management can be both rewarded and punished for taking on risk. This makes management very uneasy. So management will often take on risk to gain the rewards while at the same time implementing strategies to mitigate the amount of risk that it is willing to assume. With the why covered, now let's talk about strategies for mitigating risk. First up is change management. All change represents a risk to systems. A small change in one system may have a ripple effect that multiplies through the whole system. Change management is implemented in order to evaluate changes for their effects on the system as a whole, which can bring to light some hidden risks associated with a change. Change management allows for changes to occur while at the same time mitigating the risks associated with those changes. Then there's review of user rights and user permissions. Users must be granted rights and permissions in order to function in their positions. These rights and permissions may, in fact, represent a security risk. Periodic reviews should be conducted on user rights and permissions to ensure that the principle of least privilege is being followed, thus mitigating risk. Periodic reviews should also be conducted on user rights and permissions to ensure that all unnecessary user accounts are removed from the system, also mitigating risk. Another strategy is to perform routine audits. Audits are reviews of systems that should be conducted on a regular basis in order to reduce risk. Security audits can be conducted on many different systems to evaluate different aspects of risk, including system configurations and vulnerability assessments. Then there's incident management. It's a type of after-the-fact mitigation technique. After a security incident has occurred, effective incident management can help to contain the damage. In addition to that, effective incident management can help to prevent that security incident from occurring again. Then there's the enforcement of policies and procedures. Effective policies and procedures can reduce the chances of a risk event from ever taking place. But this relies upon the proper enforcement of those policies and procedures to help prevent that risk event from occurring. Data loss prevention systems can be implemented as a type of technology control to mitigate the risk of loss or theft of data. DLP systems can be a software application or a network appliance. They are designed to analyze information traversing the network to help ensure that sensitive data remains contained inside the established safe boundaries. DLP systems can monitor network links and review what is being transmitted through protocols associated with instant messaging, email, FTP, HTTP. DLP systems may also be configured to scan storage systems to help ensure that data is being stored in the proper location. That concludes this session on risk mitigation strategies. I began by talking about the why of taking risks and then I concluded with a brief discussion on some strategies for mitigating risks. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I hope you watch another one soon.